What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking back in on Xanima. We've played this game a couple of times in the past, and it's a little bit of a cult hit. Uh, this is one of those games that has sold a lot of copies on Steam, although you would never actually know it because the game doesn't really blow its own horn altogether that much. But this is a very, very old school, very unique, dueling-centric uh, sort of complex combat system, physics-heavy centric action RPG that's a dungeon crawler set in a grim dark world. Now we've covered this game a couple times in the past. You're probably wondering why we're covering it again here today. Uh, we're covering the game again today because they actually just released one of their biggest patches of all time. A uh, patch that completely overhauled the movement system, so it still works the same way that it did before. But I've been playing the game for an hour or two prior to the recording of this video just to reacclimate because I haven't played the game in a really long time. Uh, just to kind of like feel it out once more. And it's definitely better. They've gone through and they have overhauled the way that movement works and interacts with the terrain on like a physics level. And I think that's a really, really good thing. There used to be like these weird little wonky things that would happen from time to time in earlier versions of this game that you just learn to like play around or like deal with. And so I think it's one of those things that needed to be solved at some point and I'm glad that they got around to it. On top of that, they added a whole new area to the map. Uh, they've also overhauled every single area of the game with new items, new things going on. And so there's a lot of moving parts right now in the world of Exanima. So we're going to check it out for about 30 minutes here today. If after watching this you wanted to get Exanima for yourself, it's in early access, but it's not in like early, early, early access. This game is in like .9 right now. It's been out for a long... I'm going to smack this guy. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to try to, like, duel this guy. Oh, I'm tripping over a chair. That's probably not good. Will you trip over a chair now? You will. My sword hit the chair. Uh, if after watching this, you wanted to get this game for yourself, you absolutely 100% can do that. I've got a link for you down below to the early access. As I said, it's in kind of, like, .9 edition. Uh, you can get that early access down there. You can also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live. Let's dive on in into it so x anima x anima is one of those games it's very very difficult to recommend not because it's a bad game but specifically because it's one of those games where you just don't know if somebody's going to be into it until they get into it as of right now i'm about one to two hours into the game dungeon crawling this is my character uh, with some kind of early game loot that i've picked up from here or there this game does have a very heavy exploratory aspect it also has a very heavy sort of immersive aspect to it as well, but I think the first thing that's going to jump out on any new perspective player of Xanima is just the control system. Uh, so from the top to the bottom, this is going to be one of the strangest RPGs you've ever played with regards to how it controls on the player's end. Uh, you can control your character with right click and, and just kind of give yourself, oh, I'm about to get bopped out. Okay, stop it, please. Please don't bop me. I've walked right into you. Well... We'll return to that conversation and just... Oh, my God. All right, my dude... Oh, sat him down. That's what I like to see. I can't let my... I can't let my... Oh, I tripped over a chair, and now I'm about to get my head bashed in. All right, let's fall back. My character's, like, tripping over a plank. There we go. You die. Ow. Okay, yep. Darren is dead, unfortunately. Darren was the homeboy uh, that I had back over the other way. My character's having a little bit of trouble recovering because we're trying to 3v2 right now. I've lost the guy that carries my torch, which is really kind of a bummer because I liked Darren. I thought he was an okay guy. I don't know. We were going to catch a Giants game together at some point. Oh, he's not dead. He's back up. Nice. There we go. I got that one right there. And Darren is, I guess, fighting with his fist. We should probably assist with that. Are you going to get back up, man, or are you dead? I can't tell. I think he's dead. That fight was a little rough for us. So as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted by being attacked by quite literally the entire dungeon, uh, this game has an immersive bent to it. You can control your character with tank controls. No matter how you choose to do it, you're going to control your character with tank controls on one level or another. However, uh, you can choose to do that with Wasp, or you can choose to do that... Uh, with your right click. Apparently, Darren's pretty beat up right now, unfortunately. We're going to have to figure out some kind of way to heal him. Darren, break out the old equipment. I need you to hold this torch, dude. Like, this torch is principally important to our long-term survival. 
We also gotta figure out where the hell did he drop his sword? Is that your sword right there? It is, okay, so there's your sword back. Your character can be disarmed, your character can be wounded in this game. We're doing pretty well as far as gear goes, but unfortunately that was a little bit of a collapse right there. Uh, this area, this board that's on the ground right here, my character kept tripping over it even though it's mostly flush because I had one foot on one side of it and one foot on the other. A well-made leather vest in worn condition. This is clearly made for women. Does that mean I... Oh, okay, so it's like a... It's like, it's got like a corset or like a bodice thing going on. All right. Uh, you can loot enemies in this game, and actually another with item manipulation in this game, that's going to be the other part that I think throws people for a loop. You can click and drag any object in this game, kind of like old Diablo games. Like, actually, not old Diablo games, like uh, Divine Divinity, that's what I'm thinking of, where you can click and drag items around and put them in your inventory. And so it takes you a little while to acclimate to the way that the game functions, both with regards to controls, moving around the map, that kind of stuff. It's also going to get worse once you get into combat, because just to give you a little demonstration, Demonstration right here the combat in this game is actually really intricate so tab puts us into combat mode and if we click to the right of our character and hold we get a swing we go left and we'll swing left to right we hold down out we can do a stab right there but your character auto parries uh, so when the enemy tries to attack you your character if they have the relevant skills will attempt to like get their weapon in the way of that other weapon and like the timing of when you step in when you swing when you evade uh, leads to a very complex title that I'm not even going to begin to pretend uh, that I'm like the that I'm the master of I didn't trip and fall right there okay that was a uh, that was a tactical I was hitting the deck to avoid projectiles just in case they came flying down the hallway all right that's what I was doing right there, as I was, I was getting ready. I thought some projectiles might fly at my face, and I was like, not today, projectiles! And I was hitting the deck so that people were like, damn, look how spry he is, dude. He's like a ninja. We can't hit him. Let's all just collectively flee and run away because he's shown such prowess in the dexterous arts. And I'd be like, oh yeah. And then it would rain dungeon ladies. Uh, I forget what I was talking about now. I went off kind of on a tangent there. Um... Uh... I don't have a map or anything in this game, so I'm really just going to be wandering around a lot inside of this episode. There are lots of secrets, and there are lots of things that you can run into in this title. Uh, you should definitely take a look around, and you should definitely explore the map. However, I don't think it actually has, like, a formalized map that the player carries around with them. I've gotten through this game mostly just by wandering aimlessly. That's pretty much it. I just wander around until I find something relevant. The biggest thing I run into is that if I find a new key uh, that I am not privy to, like I've never had that key before, figuring out what door certain keys go to, because keys in this game, they don't have like names really, or anything else like that, they just look like nondescript keys as they would in real life. And so you gotta kinda like, don't memorize where keys are at, memorize where locked doors are at while playing this game, if and you can. Uh, because memorizing where the locked doors are at tends to be the way that I personally advance through the game. I just keep, like, a recollection of where every door I've ever seen is uh, that's locked. And then if I find a key, I kind of do, like, a grand, a grand tour of unlocking where I run around until I find the door that that key goes to. So there you go. That's my system. Is it a flawless system? Probably not. Is it an effective system? Uh, also, probably not. Is it the best system that I have, though? Sure, absolutely. As far as RPG aspects go in this game, what is there to play around with? Well, there's magic spells, so we have like four spells and stuff like that that we can throw around. If I hit the Q key, there you go. I can cast like a force magic spell, basically a little Fusro burp. Uh, that'll knock enemies back. It costs me a little bit of mana if I want to use it. But I think your mana regenerates with time. And so it's not really that big of a deal. I can also, like, sense enemy minds. And you can use, like, psychic powers on people and stuff like that. You can see a full list of the powers over here. Uh, they're not all in the game as of right now with the current build. But they are slowly being implemented and added on in. The new one with this current patch is the force magic spells that you can get. Things that move stuff around and you can shoot bolts at people and things of that nature in order to help you out in a fight. And knock people, like, a little bit off balance. I don't know exactly where I am right now. What is that on that shelf right there? Is this just a candle? 
It looks brightly colored. I think it's just a part of the environment. This door is already open, which makes me think I've already been over here. Unfortunately, I'm not really, like, recognizing where I'm at right now as far as the arrangement of the game. What does that do right there? We got some heavy boots inside of there. Those are really good boots. Uh, so every piece of gear in this game is kind of randomly... So there's, like, main pieces that are in the same location every single time. Uh, like the helmet and the spalders and like the chausies for your legs. Uh, but other items are kind of like randomized in where they are, what their quality is, how strong they are. So this game has a lot of replayability because you'll find cool stuff from time to time while running around the dungeon that was not there the last time you played through. This time around my character's got some pretty solid equipment. Other times I'm usually like partly naked by the time I get here. I didn't expect that box to actually be... Oh, I can put that in my inventory? Yeah, put that in my inventory. If stuff fits inside of it, I need, like, stuff that I can sort things into. I think if I remember right, it's been a while since I played the game last, but I'm pretty sure that blue orb... I think we use it, and I think it makes it so the red part of my meter goes away. So I think you use that to get rid of your red meter, and then I think there's another potion... But it's been so long, like, the last time I recorded a video on this game was the last time I played this game. And while on that stint into X Anima, I did stream it, like, all day on the day that the video went live. Unfortunately, I am not blessed with a memory like a steel trap. Uh, my memory is not so great. Especially short-term memory. So, like, eh, kind of is what it is. Are you guys hostile, dude? Sometimes they're hostile, sometimes they're not. And I definitely don't want to, like, 3v2 in the current state that we're in. Okay. All right. All right. You're cranky and angry. I get it. You're a mad little dude. All right. Let's go ahead, and we will try to line up on this guy. There we go. Got him right in the neck for the one shot. And so, as you can see, there's kind of like a loping. I used to describe this game as like, have you ever seen two drunk homeless guys fight each other with sticks that they just picked up off the ground? That's how I used to describe this game. But actually, in the current build, I find that the movement is a lot more fluid. That's good because, like, in the patch notes, that's what they said they set out to do was effectively eliminate a lot of the little annoyances that existed inside the physics-based movement that the game has. And I think they've pulled that off admirably. Like, the game feels very smooth to me right now. Those reinforced boots are going to be really nice for our homeboy over here, Darren. What is that, a figurine? It's kind of creepy. I don't think I want it. Uh, Darren, let me see your equipment, bro. I've, been, I've kept Darren alive for a long time. In my playthroughs, I feel like Darren always dies before I, like, get off the second floor. And this time around, he's, like, really putting in the old college try, like the old effort, dude. I I'm kind of proud of him. I want to put that inside of there. I want to put... I got this weird tarot deck. I've never seen this item before. I don't know if it's new or, like, what. But this is, like, a little example of the immersiveness that exists in this game. I found this tarot deck laying on somebody's desk. If I double-click it, you can actually pull tarot from the deck. And so we got the Recluse, Folly, and Perdition. You know, and I don't know if that actually does anything inside the context of the universe. But even on an immersive level, it's pretty cool. And that's just thread right there. Always look around on shelves and things. There's so many objects in this game that are, like, lootable that just look like they're in the background. But they are actually a thing that you can wrap your hands around and utilize. Uh, let's go ahead and swing around this way. I'm glad that Darren got, like, better boots. But I also need Darren to get, like, some better armor. Like, his equipment is not crazy ideal right now. So I think... Oh, these guys moved around a little bit. I don't think there's a... Oh, there is a door back there. I may still have to fight these guys. Let's check this little alcove first, and we'll see what sort of happens over here. Let me close down all these inventory pages, too. So we've got, like, an alcove with, like, a potential loot back. Is this locked? It is not locked. Uh, everything in this game kind of uses amnesia controls, I guess, is the way that I would describe it. If you want to open a door, you got to click and drag the door open, you know? If you want to put a key inside your inventory, you got to click and drag the key off the game world into your inventory. Uh, we've got a horse brush. Nothing really that I want in there. Uh, one thing I find to be pretty immersive, is that a key or is that a pen? That's like a stylus or something for like a wax tablet. 
What is that, though? Is that like a portrait? What is that? It is. It's an old portrait. That's kind of cool. There's a box right there. I don't see anything else too incredible inside of here. Nothing that's making me think to myself, oh, yeah, that'll inspire a chub. Uh, that guy's super dangerous. That guy right there with the harvest man's hook. That guy could cause some problems, so we're definitely going to want to be careful about him. One of the things with the earlier floors that makes the fight so tolerable. Oh, hey, we got ourselves a map. Good. All right, put that inside the inventory. I don't know precisely where we're at on the map just yet. Um, I also don't know what orientation this map is drawn from since we don't have a compass. Uh, there are compasses laying around. You no doubt saw that compass that was laying on that map table in that big room that we were in. I'm going to assume that this is drawn north-south, but you know what they say about assuming. You know, I don't know how I close this. Oh, right-click on it. Okay. All right. There was a compass on the desk back there that would have given us that function, but I was kind of like drawing into my spiel and talking to all of you, and so I sort of didn't think about picking it up until it was too late. Let's go ahead and open this guy open. Honestly, the main reason I like to keep Darren alive is just because I hate it. This idiot and his thugs are still sending too many down here. I admit I'm pressed by his methods in some ways. He is less a fool than he appears. I must take advantage of this and resume my research while I can. I come to find a place where I... Okay. Uh, there are going to be notes and things around. Is this guy hostile? I don't know if this guy's hostile. Are you going to try to fight me, man? Uh, you are indeed going to try to fight me. So he got that, that big old axe, and he wants to wave it around. There we go. Hit him. Hey, you got him with that one right there. Oh, swung right over the... Oh, Darren, good stab right there, dude. So we got a bearded axe on this side. A great axe. A very coarse great axe in extremely good condition. So it's got good impact damage. It's got good balance. It's got good slash. It's got good crush. How does that compare to the sword that I have in my hand? So I've just got a long sword right now. Impact, balance. Okay, so it does more impact damage, but I've got a lot more slash and thrust. And the balancing of the weapon is better, which means it recovers easier and the physics throw my character off less obnoxiously. Do you have anything good in his pockets? Let's have a look. Uh, the controls in this game when you're playing with WASD, just so you are appraised, they're tank controls. Uh, for me, that's not that big of a problem. I grew up playing the original Resident Evil titles and Parasite Eve and Galarians and all of those kinds of titles. So I am very well acclimated. Uh, to tank controls. The muscle memory comes back for me, but for some people that might be very difficult. Uh, clearly this was once a place of military activity, but who were they fighting? Were we once at war with these people? It would seem that we won. How could such events be completely erased from our history? Thaven believes somewhere down here lies the true source of our power. I cannot make sense of any of this. I wish now that I have been less dismissive of Thaven's theories. Well, we got a key. That's good. We got a key, and we've got a drawing compass. Anytime I see a compass, it makes me think about... I had this teacher when I was in, like, the fourth grade, dude. And she was kind of like a weird lady, and she had, like, a son. And, like, her son's thing is that he would do art with only a compass. That was, like... You know how, like, some artists have, like, a gimmick or, like, a gag or whatever? Like, a thing that they do to sort of, like you know, put constraints on themselves. He only used a compass to draw. And so she was always parading around all of the pictures that he would draw with a compass of, like, naval ships and stuff like that. I'm not telling this story in any kind of negative respect. It's just the second I saw a compass, it reminded me of this weird fleeing memory that I had from being, like, in the third or fourth grade. This place begins to intrigue me. Thaven understands more things than I imagined, and what if he's right? It would change everything. How could we be so ignorant? If I had more time, I believe I would undertake his mission. I wonder what changes he has brought about by now with these discoveries. These are important times, and I would live to see them. Now, this game also has a roguelike arena mode, in case that's what you're into, where you fight enemies that have random gear sets over and over and over and over again. And in so doing, uh, you can pick up their gear for like an amount of time after you defeat them. And so it's kind of almost like a draft system where you're constantly like picking things up 
or like swapping gear out. Can I move any of that on the wall? I cannot. Okay, it was worth a try. Oh, what's going on in here, man? Just like a washroom with a well or something? I don't know if that's a pooping hole or if it's like a scooping hole for waters. Is that's a that's a that's a dangerous situation to find oneself in, not knowing whether it's a pooping hole or a scooping hole. All right, well, chest of drawers is looking good. Let's go this way. I'm still moderately tempted by the bearded axe, so I think I'll bring it with me just in case. I haven't 100% decided that I want to use it yet. We do have a key, so if we come across any locked doors. I'll start using that on them. Oh, these two guys are watching me. They are armed. I'm a little bit worried they're going to charge me when I'm back in this corner because I have a longsword that's going to be kind of functionally useless if I have to fight in cramped conditions. Now, there's just no way to do that with my current gear loadout. So realistically, a lot of my life is spent trying to drag enemies and Darren into areas that guy's got a machete they're like standing in the way and i'm worried that when i walk past them sometimes when you bump the little zombie guys they get offended and then they try to bring it to you darren nice and slow let's not wake these guys up listen i don't know if darren's coming all right on some level darren seems to be struggling with the situation I think we may have to kill him, which is not great because we should be avoiding fights as much as possible. But you know what? There we go. He's got his leg cut up. That guy got cut right there. Let's back up this way. I need to swing left to right on this one. I did it wrong. Is he down? I think he's down. I think Darren got him. Darren was a manslayer out here taking life, bleeding blood destroying our enemies on the soil. Where did these guys drop their weapons? What did he have? He had a cleaver that's in bad condition. This guy had some kind of big scramasax thing. Where did that go? There it is, a long knife in great condition. You know, it's kind of tempting to have a short blade for if I get caught out in like a bad situation. I think I'm going to do it. Yeah, I'm going to put the I'm going to put the short blade on. And we can swap to it with our R key. So you get two different gear sets that you could play around with. And having a short weapon, just in case, you know, I got a Folsom, I got a Folsom County shiva bitch. Because these things happen in life, all right? Sometimes you go outside for a task. I don't know, maybe you're going to get a Slurpee. Uh, maybe you're going to buy a new pair of socks. Uh, maybe you just want to get some fresh air. And then womp womp, you end up having to stab a guy. All right, the world out there, it's its a dangerous place full of people that want to stab you uh, when you want to buy socks. And so ha having a little, you know, tucking that thing on you every, you know, keep, keep a little blade in the tuck spot, not the worst idea. All right, sometimes you got to, you know, can't get caught lacking when it's cracking, chat. You can't get caught lacking when it's cracking. This is like a big storeroom. Okay, I don't see any lootable containers but this is one of those rooms that has like a lot of clutter and so it can be worth it from time to time to just kind of look through areas like this and see what you can locate there is a door back here looks like it leads back out into the hall so that's fine uh, it looks like we've got kind of like an oval-shaped room right here. Like, this is such an interesting-looking room that I'm beginning to wonder if this is going to show up again on the map. Like, this does not look like it was just a square room. Like, I think everything in this game was honestly hand-designed. But we're in kind of like an oval-shaped room with a column in the middle of it. How many columns are there? There's three columns with the bottom in kind of like an L config. Actually, I think I've got us. I think we're up here. I think this is it. I think what I ran into, though, is so if you arrange this so that it's this way, we have it arranged the right way. The thing is, 
these are not connected. I was looking for a connected L block because I was seeing the shelves. So I was considering them connected like these blocks right here, which threw off my orientation, but there we are. That's our map right there. I don't know exactly where we've been. I don't know exactly where we're going, but hey, Navigation 101, we pulled it off. We orienteered where we needed to orienteer. I do wish that once we had this, we could have like a little version of it up there. But ah oh well. Does it say what's inside this room right here? A long hallway with some kind of connected chapel area over there is what it looks like to me. Just the sheer amount of atmosphere that this game has, too, if you've never played it before. It's got, like, this slow, kind of cloying, sort of worrisome anxiety almost to it. Because fights can be over very quickly in this game. And so, like, you try to avoid fighting as much as you can. Oof, that was a good hit right there. I think we're okay as long as we stay away from the blade on that big old cleaver. That thing's got to be almost dead. It's soaking some serious hits. Is she down? She's down. I was going to say, dude. She was soaking some nasty hits right there. I got to find a health potion. I think I missed that. So, like, there's, like, certain things that are, like I said, always in the same spots. And I'm pretty sure I missed the health potion on the first floor because it's been a while since I played last. Uh, those leggings are an upgrade for our man Darren. So, D-Man, open up that inventory. Let's see that equipment. We're going to put that gambeson on right there. We can throw that out. We're going to put on the gambeson like the padded pa pants as well. Okay. I think we're in okay shape. I want to give Darren the battle axe really badly because I find that the AI tends to fight pretty well with two-handed weapons. Like, they tend to judge their distances quite well. And this game does take that into account. Like, if you strike the enemy with the haft, it does, like, no damage. But if you strike the enemy with the blade, that's where the, the money hit is at. And so spacing is, like, a principal part of this game in paying attention to, like, what enemies are going to do. Like, getting them to step on into a hit or you trying to step out of a hit, learning where the kill zones are on various weapons, and sort of like commit. Convi I know it doesn't seem like that impressive of a thing. Like, we all obviously know which part of the axe you don't want to get hit by, but having some semblance of spatial awareness in this game will help you out as to, like, you know, what distance should I stand at with certain weapons. Uh, I tend to play with two-handed weapons. I tend to find them a lot easier. That's my advice for new players, is to have Darren carry the torch and play two-handed weapons because reach in this game is like king, especially if you've got like a claymore where you get damn this blade when it hits the enemy, as long as they don't have crazy slashing dis like da uh, resistance, it's going to deal some damage when it slides across them. And so having a weapon like this one right here that extends the reach of your arm by a lot and on top of that has a large surface area that counts as a damaging surface area tends to make the game a little bit easier. So things like this and bill hooks tend to be really good in this game, in my experience. Was there any door that I missed back here? I don't think there was. I guess it's just like a like a tavern. I had thought that it would be something more. This guy's definitely hostile with that two hander. Maybe? Oh, I guess not. I guess that guy just wanders. Uh, we're sitting in a tavern, something that I have not done in a long time. Alas, it is empty and all the drinks spoiled. These people cannot have been so different from us, and yet some things are very strange. There are lamps and even fires that never burn out. I do not understand the source of their power. The walls echo with the souls of the long dead, but beneath that I sense something else, like a far-reaching presence. It is faint but everywhere and very strange. Could this be the mythical guardian or even Thaven's spellgiver? I don't know what the storyline is yet. This game kind of follows the Dark Souls blueprint where you don't quite know what's going on with the narrative. All you know is that you've woken up in this dungeon. Darren has also woken up in this dungeon. Uh, so we're kind of like on the same page as far as all of this is concerned. Is this the way that I came from? 
Uh, no, that's a bathroom right there, so I don't exactly know where that's at. All right. I don't know if you can... Oh, that's a bathroom right there, too. I guess being connected to a tavern, you probably want a place for people to take a leak at when I'm on, like, a bit of a, a drinking bender. It, it seems like the fluids flow through you pretty rapidly, so, like, why not? Oh, boy. I'd really like to avoid this if I can. That bar is not that big of a problem, but that guy's, like, machete or sword or whatever it is is a problem. Some weapons in this game make me more nervous than others. I don't know if I've been to the right over here, but having the map is a really nice utility that I can check on now and just sort of track where I'm at. So that's pretty helpful, but this is Ex Anima. I think this game is really, really rad. It's one of those rare games that's like a super unique experience that you can't get anywhere else. There's a lot of derivative stuff in indie gaming. This is not that derivative stuff. This is actually the kind of game that I love to cover. Games like this, games like Delta V, uh, games like Mech Engineers. Uh, those games may not be flawless, but I enjoy covering them because they are the games that go their own way in, in sort of like a novel way. They buck tradition. Like, I'm sure that if this game sat in front of a publisher, they would tear their hair out and be like, there's no way this... Oh, there we go. We found a save point. Every now and again, uh, the game will save. You got to turn it on in the. Ooh, we found a. Ooh. Okay. All right. I see you. I see you. We got ourselves a breastplate now. Dude, we're starting to look geared. What is that right there? The earth on which we walk. If you're wondering about skills, by the way, there are skills in this game. Uh, so they learn over time. Doing any action accumulates XP inside of these. You can only work on one skill at a time. And every single one of these trees lets you take five skills, basically, uh, for each of these areas. And so that's how your character advances on top of that as you play through the game. Uh, you're going to get magical energy right here that stores up. And you can channel that magical energy into other magical ideas. However, when you click on these, they require certain aspects. So if I go into here, you can see insight, concentration. We have to get various aspects of insight and concentration and things like that in order to learn new magic spells. So your character does have to, like, you gotta kind of, like, specialize your character, basically, in the way that you want to go. We got another key right there. And it looks the same as that other key. Damn, that's a problem. All right. That's going to suck to figure out. Oh, this guy right here. Yup. I think this is the thing that heals me, if I remember right. When you see that faint glow, this is like a super rare item. And I think I, I use that. Well, I don't remember exactly how it all works. I remember there's a trick to healing yourself. And I think it has something to do with the orb. And the glowing jar. Actually, the glowing jar might be mana because it's blue. I don't remember. It's been too long since I played the game last. I'm, I'm like in that weird space right now where I'm functioning entirely on like these bits and fragments of memory that are, that are sort of, you know, falling apart. If nothing else, we can organize the inventory a little bit and I can give you guys the outro. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what is worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, I was fooling around with a title called Ex Anima, which is an old friend of the channel. I've always been kind of rooting for this game. I love the novel titles, man. Games like this are why I got into indie games. Like, I want more games like this. Like, more games that buck the establishment and just do something weird and do something out there. In, a, in kind of like a dark fantasy setting that I'm into. I'll catch you all tomorrow. Uh, check out Ex Anima. And that's about all I got for you. Bye, folks.